Okay, is that any better? I have the volume up as loud as I can. I move the, the microphone closer. Can everybody hear me? It's as close as it's going to get. <laughs> Unless I eat it. <laughs> okay, good. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. My name is Melissa Armo, and I'm here tonight to talk to you about trading. My favorite topic and yours. And so tonight I'm going to talk about how you can make six figures a year working 30 minutes a day. This is me. If you haven't seen me on TV, this is me. And if you have any questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. Okay? Also, you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. If you'd like any any questions, just reach out to me. I think calling me is the best way. So we're going to talk about time. I said 30 minutes. Time, time, time. 30, 30 minutes is really what I'm looking for each morning. Market opens at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. I'm in New York. So depending on where you are, you may be in a different time zone. But the stock market opens at 9.30 Eastern. Okay. So for me, when I'm, when I'm searching, I'm trying to look for really good setups that I can get in and out of trades, or at the very least get in, and, and, and try to get out. I may hold something a little bit longer. We're going to go through one tonight that had a little bit longer, but I could have got out earlier. But I'm looking for quick trades, fast trades, early setups, okay? So how important is time as a day trader? It's extremely important. If you're a day trader, you have to get in and you have to get out between 9.30 and 4. And, and you really shouldn't be in trades to like, you know, 3.50, 58. So really like between 9.30 and I'd say 3, 3.15, 3.30, the latest. Okay? Any questions, just write it in the room. So time is very important because you're restricted as a day trader. You have to get in and you have to make money and you have to exit the trade each day before four. If you don't and you're in a trade and you hold it, then guess what? Well, then you're going to end up having to have probably a margin call with a broker or it will come out of your account as if you're in an overnight without any margin, if you, even if you have the cash there. So it's, it's, you just got to make sure that you're very, very focused on getting a, what I call a momentum move, a big move, a, a chunk of a move of some stock, whatever stock you're playing on any given day within a, so that period of time. And the time is between 9.30 and 4. Now for me, I'm looking for setups early, morning, 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 okay? So what time of the day has the most volatility? Guess what? The morning. So I'm looking for setups in the morning because I'm trying to capture the fast move because I know that I have to get in and I have to get out as a day trader between 9.30 and 4. So let's talk here a little bit about volatility. What is volatility? Volatility often refers to the amount of uncertainty or risk related to the size of changes in a security's value. A higher volatility means that a security's value can potentially be spread out over a larger range of values. This means that the price of the security can change dramatically over a short time period in either direction. A lower volatility means that a security's value does not fluctuate dramatically and tends to be more steady. So I want volatility. I'm looking for the volatility. You've got to get in the right direction. But of course, you have to get a stock in the right direction when you take a position no matter what, okay? Whether you would halt, take a trade and be in it for the next 12 months or take a trade and be in it for 12 minutes, okay, you have to get it in the right direction if you want to profit. So this is just simple, common sense, all right? You always have to get the direction right or you're basically going to lose. So that's something that I focus on. So you have to... Again, focus, and how do I do that? Well, I try to make it less confusing by getting organized in the morning pre-market. So I take the time before 9.30, before the market opens, to focus, focus, focus on what I'm supposed to be doing trading-wise. I say, what do I want to trade today? What stocks do I want to trade today, and in what direction? Either longs or shorts. And then I look for the setups to get in and out fast, into the morning part of the day. So time is very important as a day trader, not only because you have to get in and out between 9.30 and 4, but also if you're going to trade, 
then you want to trade during the time that has the maximum volatility and the maximum move that you could possibly, possibly get. Okay, everybody understand where I'm going with this here? So I decided a long time ago, 12 years now, 20, 2008, when I started trading to focus on gaps because gaps tend to have big moves on the day. Not every single gap, but many gaps. You have to get the direction right and you have to get the timing right. And I also found that gaps have a lot of volatility and a lot of momentum. And obviously I'm looking for those when? In the morning. So I can get in and get out, get in and get out, get in and get out. Because again, that is critical if you want to make money as a day trader. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck in something waiting, waiting, waiting for it to go. And again, you have to get in and out if you're trading specifically on margin. Because if you're a day trader, you're probably trading on margin. All right. Otherwise, you need the cash to buy the stock in full with the price point, which, which would not be really then qualify as a day trader. Any questions here so far? Okay. So let's get to what a gap is. For those of you that don't know, that is what I focus on. I'm gonna show you here a gap. This is one right here, boom, EXPE. So the stock gap last week. Stock closed up here the night before, boom, open in the morning here. So the stock closed up here around 135. At four o'clock Eastern time, it closed here and opened here. Where did it open? It opened around 115 and change. The stock gap down. There are bullish gaps as well. Here's a bullish gap. So this is a bearish gap. Over here, back in October, early October, the stock had a bullish gap. This is bearish, this is bullish. Now, what happened on this one? Stock closed here at 136, boom, gapped up. So closed here at four o'clock at 9.30 in the morning, it gapped up and opened at 138, price opened higher. So this is a bullish gap, this is a bearish gap. You cannot go along every bullish gap and you can't short every bearish gap. So I created a system to determine something, for example, like the EXP we did last week, if this is a short or if this is a long. Well, I determined it was a short. This was a, this was a really nice read of this in the pre-market here. This stock had so much bigger of a move than I ever expected, which I pretty much figured out <laughs> very early in the morning, but it kept going all day. And at one point then I even said 100. And then it ended up, I think the low in the day this was this 97 and change. But this is a great example of what actually can happen if, you, if you're looking for something for volatility and momentum. I, I only had one trade in this, but you could have literally traded this all day. This was had lots of opportunity. You do get these kinds of gaps in earnings season. You will see gaps like this in this month period, and I had the right pick, so we're going to go over it. And actually, this looks lower here. I clipped this from today. Any questions here so far? So this is a gap, okay? So I'm looking for the time of the day in the morning to get in, get out quick. Now the fact that you could have played this all day is an anomaly because most stocks do not have moves like this on any given day, even good gaps like I find, but you will see them. And this was a good example, okay? Now that was a daily chart, okay? So now I'm going to be looking at a one minute chart. Some of you I think were in the trading room open house I had for two days last weekend, I called this train. Again, clock is behind the one minute, close up here at four o'clock, boom, open in the morning here. This is a one minute chart, this is 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, 9.33, 9.34, 9.35. We shorted this stock, boom. Shorted it, boom. Got in, got out, boom, boom. Now, as I said earlier, this ended up going just crazy birds, okay? In fact, looking at this here, talk about the first 30 minutes of the day, the stock from between 9.30 and 10 a.m. actually broke. Up in here, it fell all the way down to 101 within that first 30 minutes. Didn't hold this all the way down here, but I just wanna show you, again, volatility, how you find it and pick it and play it and how much money you can make with this. But this was a really nice trade either, either way. Now, here was the trade. Entry was 114.30. Stop was 116.10, boom, 2,500 shares, exit 111.75. And as I showed you, I'm gonna go back to the chart. The stock dropped $10 plus even before 10 o'clock on this. But again, you're never gonna get out of a short at the low and you're never gonna get out of, the, of, a, of a long at the high. 
That is not my goal. My goal is, however, to always pick the best stock every day to play and get the direction right. And that's something I've accomplished to a very, very high degree of certainty, which is part of the reason for my success. This is a really nice profit as well. You can't argue with a move like this and we hit it, boom. So 6,375. I'm gonna go back and we're gonna look at this here again. Boom, 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 boom. And again, if you held it, you made more. This kept going. So I'm looking for this period here. So where you got out here, really, I mean, it was totally on you. But I had the pick, I had the call, and here's the move. Really nice move in this. And even today, now I'm just seeing this chart, this looks lower. Now, again, I'm, I'm not doing this here. And the market's at the highs, but this, this, this is weak, okay? So this is what I look for every day. Today, tomorrow, the next day, the next day. Today I had the trading room closed. Veterans Day holiday, bond market closed, market was slow today. But I will tell you that this month, November, is a busy, busy time. So we won't see other moves like this. But this is a good example of what I'm looking for. The momentum, the volatility, and the 30 minute period. Day trading is about getting in and out, in and out, in and out. And whether you're in and out in several seconds or several minutes, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna show you another trade here in a minute that I held. But, and you could have held this. You could have held this. In fact, this had such a big drop off that you could have put the stop at break even and just went away and came back before the close. But you know, I don't, I don't trade like that. Any questions here so far? About EXP, about gaps, about day trading before I keep going. Okay. So again, time in the trade in the XPE was quick, 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 quick. Less than 30 minutes, less than 10 minutes we were in that trade. Although you could have held it down. You could have held it all the way down to 10 o'clock. But either way, what I look for and qualify for in the pre-market is to find what gap to play, what stock is gapping, to know whether to go long or short it, and to know and see in the pre-market that I can take an entry in this stock that's gonna have a move, a big move, that had a Jimungo move, but any kind of move where I can profit, that I can get out in the first 30 minute period. And that HP is such a big move that it didn't matter even if you only took a couple hundred shares. And if you're new to trading and you have a small account, you should be trading with a couple hundred shares. You shouldn't be trading with a couple thousand shares, okay? You have all the time in the world to make a lot of money once you learn how to do what I know. And it really doesn't take that long to learn it, okay? It's practice. It's like one of the things, like I'm in a system now, you know, like you hear this all the time where people are in the trading zone or whatever it's called. There's a book out there. I never read it called something like that. But the fact is like once you do something and it could be trading, it could be riding a bike, it could be playing a sport. It could be playing a musical instrument, anything, anything at all. Where you're doing it every day, it becomes like just part of you. Where you don't really think hard. Like I don't think hard when I'm choosing my stocks. I don't think hard when I'm rating them. I don't think hard when I'm doing them. When I start to think really hard, then I realize something's off, okay? Because it's second nature to me now because I've been doing nothing but gaps for the last 12 years. Makes sense? So if you're overthinking what you're doing with your strategy trading, or if you don't have a strategy at all, you need to stop. Because one, the thing you're doing may not be working, or two, something's off with what you're doing that it just doesn't work right, or you don't understand what you're doing. Because it shouldn't be something that you have to think so hard about, okay? Now, MCD, this was one here, closed here, gap down, fell. I have an options newsletter called puts in this and also the day train. This one here was another one, closed here, gap down, fell. So this was a short and puts, this was a short and puts. Day trade short, day trade short. Puts you could have done as a day trade or hell. And again, same thing here with that one. Now let's take a look at this one. This was on the 22nd, okay? I'm gonna go back here. The 22nd was this day here. See, this is another big fat bar. 
High up in here is around 205, low in here is around 200. Another beautiful, beautiful, beautiful move, okay? So MCD, open, dropped, fell off a planet, okay? We ended up shorting this here, pushed back, took more, took more, dropped, fell. And then you see where it ended up. Now this was one where I could have gotten out of earlier than I did. I ended up holding it. I saw that it was gonna to get to the bigger number. I saw that it was gonna to get to 200 plus. I ended up deciding to hold it. And here is the move on this one. Again, the 22nd. This is the 15 minute chart. Boom. This is the first 15 minutes of the day. This is by 1030. Again, you could have shorted this here and got out in 30 minutes, but I wanna show you that sometimes you might wanna hold something if you have time, if their target is still left. And that's something I teach in the class too, that you might wanna hold it. And this kept going. I felt that 200 was realistic in this and it ended up continuing through that broke 200, okay? Here's a follow through then the next day. So this is the 23rd. Here's a follow through on the 24th. The day that it gapped here, the first day here was the 22nd. This was McDonald's. I forget, I think this was earnings and the second gap was news. Yeah, I think, I think, I think it was, I think this day, the 22nd was the earnings and the, and the one McDonald's, okay? Any questions from anyone about anything at all? Now let's talk about the option here. So this is MCD, okay? This was put, so I called as well. I'm just showing you this here because you can day trade options. Even though in the trading room, I'm calling the day trades. The options newsletter is available if you don't have time to day trade the in the room you can day trade actual options, okay? So this one here, again, I called the 20250s, and I called this in the pre-market, 904 market open at 930, and the stock dropped all the way down, broke 200, fell off a planet. So this was one that just fell, fell, fell. I think a great exit on this was the first day as a day trade. However, this continued. So if for some reason you do not have a margin account, if you don't have a day trading margin account, you can do options, but then you have to follow the restrictions of doing options if you're not gonna do them as day trades in and out. In this case here, this McDonald's, you could have taken it on the 22nd and exited it on the Tuesday or the following day or the Thursday or whatever day that was. Yeah, this was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I think it fell down. Any questions by anyone at all? So I'm giving you some different ideas here. You can do day trades, you can do options trades, whatever you wanna do. This was taking it on the 22nd and exiting the 22nd, because that's what I thought was a good, good, a good idea. I did not know this would fall for a week, but again, if you held it, you held it. But again, your, your goal is never to get out of something at the low of the day in a short. I thought this was a fabulous, fabulous trade. And I'm showing you here three different risk units so you can see what the potential is for the amount of money that you have that you can risk. So cost of the put was $1.10. Okay, this was the 202.50s. 70 contracts with a 7,700 risk, exit 355, boom. Profit 17,150. Now, intermediate trader tracking cost $1.10, 20 contracts, risk 2,200. Again, exit on the 22nd, profit 4,900. You could have made more, this kept going. But I just wanna show you how your profit margin, your return on investment here, no matter what you did, doubled on the day. Now again, you have to be able to trade the option as a day trade if you wanted to have done this. In this case here with McDonald's, it wouldn't have mattered if you had held on to it overnight, you actually would have made more money. But for me, the one thing that I've noticed particularly, now this is before the market broke out over the highs, which we're in this positioning now where I have to kind of see where we go here. We're strong the last like two, three days, pretty much the last week. But I mean, there was a period of a couple of weeks and a couple of months where the market was really, really wild. And I said to everybody, take profits, take profits, take profits. And when you have something where you double your money in a day, I don't care if it's a day trade, I don't care if it's an option trade, I don't care if it's a swing trade, that's real cash. And you don't get trades like that every single day. So I think you have to book it. I think you have to be smart. I think it's very, very important. Um, I, I, I just do, okay? Any questions? Now, beginner trader cost 110, 
Number of contracts, again, 10, this is $1,100 risk, exit 355, profit 2450, okay? So again, here was this, closed here, gap down, fell, 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 okay? Fell again. So in this case here, here was the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th. Actually, that, was, that might have been Tuesday. Yeah, it was Tuesday this happened. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but the last day was Friday, the expiration. So again, I mean, there's times you can hold things into the last day. This is well to the strike. You just have to be careful. Okay. Here was the day that we did this. I think it was last week. So this is the 4th of November. Again, Fast trade. So the other one I held, but you could have got out early. This one here, close to your gap down, fell, dropped, rallied, boom, got the drop. Again, another short in McDonald's. Here's the 15 minute, dropped, fell, boom, based out, fell again. Again, this is on November 4th, okay? So in this case here, we took a stop. The first trade of McDonald's failed. Had the stop and put the stop, got stopped out. Added to this one, didn't work out. Second trade in McDonald's, this is on the 4th of November, worked. Cover the loss from the first trade and still profit on the day, okay? So you'll learn this in the class with me too. I sometimes will do a retake. Not all the time, but I did like this gap. I did like this lower. I still like this lower, although I don't have any trades on in this right now. This is a one minute chart. This is a 15 minute chart. I'm showing a couple different charts in here. This is a day chart. The entries that we're taking in here though are in the one minute chart. But I'm showing you different charts because I do look at all the charts. So I look at I look at all these charts, quite frankly. But these entries here that I'm calling in the room that we're doing in the morning are one minute charts. Now, that being said, you cannot trade the one minute chart all day. You can't do it. You're going to get tripped up doing that. Why? Because it wiggles and jiggles and wiggles and jiggles and moves around a lot with the market. So you may love something, love something that have a very precise entry in the morning. And then as the day goes on, a lot of things are affected by the market. You don't have the same precision on the one minute. So that's just a warning, you know? So again, that's why I also like to focus in the morning, but you get the volatility in the morning. You get the momentum in the morning. And again, I'm saying the first 30 minutes of the day. In this case here, this fell off here into 10.15. That's fine. That's still the morning period. Okay. So one minute for early. I would not trade the one minute chart at two o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. It's just not going to hold. It's going to lift and push around and flip and drop and do all kinds of crazy things. All right. So that was this day here. Now this is the daily, had a nice drop. Again, gap down, closed here, gap down, boom, McDonald's. Okay. So this, I called another option in this too. I mean, there was just a ton of trades in this. This was one, just worked out of the game. So cost was cheap, $1.65, advanced trader risk, $74.25, exit $2.95, in and out, in and out, in and out. 58.50. Again, took it, got out the same day. Boom. So, I mean, and also, I will tell you this. If you, it, you know, when you're trading, I don't care if you're doing day trades, if you're doing options or whatever you're doing, it's great to hold things and sometimes get bigger moves. I'm not saying I never do that. Sometimes I do, but I have to see that I'm going to have something there that's going to tell me that that's going to be able to follow through, whether it's the market, whether it's the gap rating, whether it's the way that it closed or it didn't close or something like that, okay? Or some kind of data that's coming out, news, whatever. So the reality is that you are it's never over to the fat lady sings and the money's in your account. It's great to say, well, I'm up this much, I'm up this much, I'm up that much. Yeah, that's great. And my goal is always to flip it over one. This didn't quite meet the honey mustard, but it got pretty close and that's still real cash. And once you've booked the money, then you know that it's yours. And also then you have the money in your account to take another trade. Because once you're in a trade, that money is number one, still at risk until you get out with a profit. And number two, you don't have that money accessible to use to invest in another trade. Again, whether it's an option or whether it's a day trade, it's still sucking up either your buying power as a day trade or your cash in your account as an option. So I've been
been calling a lot of trades this year in the options letter. And I call at least one trade a day in the day trading room. And in busy season, sometimes we do two, sometimes three. I mean, if I see it, I call it. If we want to make money and it's there, we do it. Okay, so you've got plenty of chances and plenty of opportunities. I'm still very focused. I don't have the trading room open all day and I'm not calling even 10 things a day. One, one or two. Okay, and they gotta be good and they gotta be quality, but that's still very a small amount in the overall sense of the way a lot of people tend to trade. I think a lot of people tend to over trade. Trading rooms over trade, people over trade. Um, and I don't think you can do well with that. You're gonna have a lot more losses over trading than you do uh, being focused on the trades. But when I say that you you still are booking the money, then you know that it's yours, it's boom, it's there, it's in your account, and then you have it to take the next trade that I call, whatever that trade happens to be. Because I mean, nine times out of 10, I'm gonna call another one. Could be today, could be tomorrow. Follow me? Okay. So anyways, MCD was a really nice trade, huge profits in that. Huge profits in that, and actually, I put the day trade here in CVS. I didn't put the option in CVS. I sent an email about it uh, today. If I have time, I'll pull up the chart. CVS was another one. Huge profits in that. Now, MCD was a, bull, a bearish call. CVS was a bullish call, okay? So returns can be incredible if you're focused on doing gaps. And when you think about the annual returns, it's very, very different than anything you could ever make in a savings account or a CD or, or even just being invested in stocks because when you're long-term invested, say your retirement account or something like that, you can't take the money out, okay? You can't take the money out. You can't use margin. This is about maximizing the cash that you have for the period of time that you're trading, again, between 9.30 and 10, where you're in and you're out and you're looking for the move and the qualified move where you take it in and you take it out, in and out. Any questions here so far from anyone? Okay. So the other thing I wanna talk about here tonight a little bit, getting into, um, oh, I do have a question here. Do I have to define watch list? I don't, I don't like post a watch list in the room if you join the trading room after the Golden Gap course, then I rate the gaps in the morning and I put in what I like in the rating. I put it in. If I like MCD, I put it in the room. Top watch, MCD. I might have two top watches. So I don't have a large, a large list, no, because I, I do the work. That's the benefit of being in the trading room with me. Kathy's in here right now. She's fairly new. She did the class two months ago. She knows what I mean. So the bottom line is I don't put a large watch list. You can rate the gaps yourself. If you do the class, you should. But I handle all of that, and then I put in the top one that we're looking at, whatever one it happens to be. Okay. Makes sense. But you can make your own watch list, and then once you do the class, you can go through and rate everything, but you want to qualify it down. You want to narrow it down to one or two. Sometimes I'll watch two. Sometimes I'll watch one. Okay. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying here, I'm looking for institutional money. I'm looking for institutional money in the gap, okay? I'm looking for it in the gap, and I'm looking to see where's it going to take it? Where are we going here? So here was the SPY. This is the breakout that I called in the market as long as worked. This was a nice breakout. This is real. Market is higher. In fact, I'll pull up here if we have time tonight to see where we are today. We're, gonna, we're headed to 310 in the SPY. So the reality is that we based out, based out, based out, but then we broke out here. This is real. So money came in, lifted the market here, and this gap up, closed here, gapped up, rallied, gapped up again. And then I know a lot of people shorted this and looked at it as a double, triple top and shorted the market. That was crazy town. The market, the market today, I guess it just proves on a low volume day today how we held and rallied and got bought. Unless some crazy thing happens tonight, between tonight and tomorrow morning, we're probably going to gap up tomorrow and run. So, I mean, that's just how I'm seeing it. So I'm looking for institutional money. In the case of the market here, it's buying. But you got to get in this mindset. And I like a lot of people are in this mindset where they just like, they're like buy, hold, buy, hold, buy, hold. In fact, Galahad, I see you here. That was a big contention with you. You wanted to buy and hold all the time or short and hold all the time. The hold, 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 hold is not 
is not the thought process or the objective in making money in the market. I probably never had that difficulty because I never traded until I started. I never invested in the market until I started in 2008. I never did anything at all in the market until I started day trading. So for me, I didn't have to make any kind of mental adjustments. But if you're from a past or any type of educational system or, or if you've ever invested money in the market and you have this buy and hold thing, and I, I know I have people, there are people in my trading room even now that are still in this buy and hold mentality. In fact, I, I, I have people that still have a difficulty like the idea of even shorting. Like what is a short? When you short a stock, it's like you're betting or you're predicting that the stock's gonna fall. You're shorting it. A lot of people don't even can't even wrap their head around that concept. It's like you're shorting a stock at ten dollars. When it drops to nine, you make money, you make a buck. A lot of people understand the buy concept, not the short concept. But shorting is something I do a lot. I do more than I even go long. Okay. And as far as holding, again, there's specific times to do it. MCD was one of those. All right. But you got to watch what you're doing. Now let's talk about CVS. This was a nice one here. This was the first day it came out. This was the earnings. Stock closed here, gapped up, ran up, boom. Got to the target I said, I said 71.72, boom. Okay, this is CVS. This is a fast, fast trade. Now, what happened here in the morning? Here's the buying. Here's the institutional money. Stock gapped up. This is in the pre-market. You could have rolled out of bed and seen this here. 7 o'clock, 7.05, 7.15, 8 a.m., so I knew right away this is the best gap. This wasn't long. I typically like to short. I said, oh, do, 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 do. This is the best gap today. And then look at this. Shoot, boom, boom. And it ran right up. So here's the open. This is the pre-market. So I took that off because this is how I like to trade with this. I take it off. We went long. Boom. Take it, get out. Take it, get out. Take it, get out. Time of the day, 9.30. Boom. Out before 10 o'clock. And again, I called a bunch of options in this too. So entry was 69.60, stop was underneath because we're going long in CVS. This is a long, not a short. So we entered at 69.60, stop 68.80, 3,000 shares, exit 70.62. Again, in, out, in, out, in, out, 3,060. Nice profit. Usually looking for a dollar move in a stock at this price point. We got it. Okay. Now, if you're a beginner, the only one to take 300 shares, you could have made 306 bucks. Again, I'm looking to turn it over, turn it over. So this is one over of your risk, of your initial risk. That's a nice move. That's what we're looking for typically every day. Some days I get less, some days I get a little bit more, okay? EXP was larger than expected. Some of their trades are less than expected. I can't predict that because I don't know what the stop or the difference between the entry and the exit is gonna be on any given day. When I'm trading, and I'm looking for what to do. I don't I don't know the exact entry, the setup, or the stop, or anything until I'm watching it live. And that's the benefit of being in the trading room with me because I'm calling it. Okay, I'm calling it, and I'm seeing it, and then we're doing it. Okay, any questions? So I'm looking to really get in and out of trades ideally in 30 minutes. That's that's the best that I have to give. Like when I am in that mode. If I do the, I excel, I just excel, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that sometimes it doesn't mean that it's good to hold something like MCD. And I look back in EXP and say, well, I saw what it was gonna do and where it's gonna go, but by the time I had, I was ready out of the trade. And it was too much money not to get out, okay? Being greedy never pays when it comes to the market. And the people that start out that make money end up losing when they start to get greedy and then they go into that, default mindset and then they're always chasing their tail okay so it's important to understand you you have to just have the consistency with what you're doing and for me it really is the fast trades i find out when i veer off that i'm not talking about mcd i'm talking about when i try to like give something a chance a little bit too long too long of a chance then it it just it never it never pays i say why did i give that too why did i give that too long i gave it too long it needed, it needed to prove itself to me. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it, and it needs to do it, and it needs to do it fast, okay? Same thing with the market. So for me, I'm focused on one strategy, one pick, and I'm in and out, and in and out. It makes it easy. 
If you work in the West Coast, different time zone, you're three hours or two hours, and if you're on Central time zone, you can get J Trade in the morning and go to a job. And depending on where you are in the world, it might be night. Okay, so you can get out there in the world and still have a job and trade in the morning depending on your time zone. If you want to do this full time, you're in Eastern time zone, then that's fine too. But I've definitely found that in reference to trading the in and out, then you know the money's there. Then you know the money's booked. And as the day goes on, you get emails, you get texts, your phone rings, you get distractions, you turn the TV on, then you lose conviction in what you're doing. I and mean, there's just so many things that go on that you can be perfect for 30 minutes a day. You can, I can, I am. You, you, it's too hard to, to be like that for six and a half hours with no distractions because life gets in the way, okay? Now I'm single, but a lot of people have kids and they have spouses and they have dogs running around the house. You get distracted, okay? The focus counts. It makes a difference. It doesn't make a difference in pennies and dollars. It makes a difference when we're talking about thousands of dollars. It's a difference between being in a trade and being up six grand and all of a sudden turning around and being in a trade and you're only up two grand. And then people do this all the time. They try to get it back to the six grand they were up and then all of a sudden instead of making and booking the two grand when they realize they missed their exit, then they end up losing in a trade they were up six and they lose. You, so, you know, the focus is so important, okay? And again, it's never over to the fat lady sings and you have that money booked, okay? And that's one of the reasons I have the trading room and close it down early, to force the discipline, all right? So it's about the focus on volatility, the focus on the time of the day, which is very important as a day trader, okay? And I even think it's important as an options trader, even if you want to hold something overnight, <laughs> you still the same time is important for options. The time that you're entering the options trades and the time that you're going to look to exit the options trades, you still have to look for the momentum volatility at those different time periods. It counts. It counts to maximize your profit. Again, your goal is to get out of the high, and it's not to get out of the low and a short, but you still can find a way to maximize your profit. And it's a balancing act, and it's a process, and you're learning. And you're learning along the way, and making money along the way, too, if you're following me. Any questions from anyone so far about anything I've talked about here tonight? <clears throat> I don't know if there's any gaps tonight. Galahad, I see you're here. If there's anything you want me to look at, I will look at it here if we have time. So anyways, the market, as I said, this is a chart of the cues. I had this buy in earlier. Market is, is, you know, is, is starting to look like it's going to break out again. Now, this was the CVS. Again, it called an, a bunch of options in this. And, and this continuum, we'll look at the CVS and we'll look at the market when we're done here. But if you want to day trade, it's about size. And once you're starting out, I say start with small size, a couple hundred shares, and then work into the size where you size it up, okay? But if you if you take a thousand shares and something moves a dollar, <coughs> that's a thousand bucks, okay? And you could have had that in CVS, or two thousand, or four thousand. Again, you have to have the buying power to take the trades. You can open up a retail account, or you can open up a proprietary day trading account. You don't need as much money in a prop account, and you get more margin but I would be careful about the places that you go to. Retail accounts, you can virtually go anywhere, all right? And right now, I think a lot of retail brokerages aren't even charging commissions, okay? So that's something new in the last few weeks. I do not have uh, many indicators. I'm reading the price. That is the main, 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 main focus. And the more things you have in the chart, guess what? The less focus will be on the price. And what, what matters? Only the price. People live and die by their indicators. I could trade with nothing. I could trade the tape. I, I could trade the tape. I'm probably one of the only people that I know, of all the people that I know in the market, from TV on up, since all the people that I've ever learned from and talked to ever since I started in 2008, I'm probably one of the only people that could trade based on the tape. Like when I was on TV a lot last year, I haven't been on as much this year, which is probably why I've traded more. Um, my schedule was way, way too consuming last year for television, and, I, and I'm and i more focused on trading this year. But when I would be at Fox last year, when I was on like five days a week, I didn't, I didn't have my charts. I didn't have my charts at all. And I even realized even more how good I was because I would need to see the price of something, and I could tell what it looked like, and I could tell what it was at just knowing the number. I could trade on the tape, and that is phenomenal. <laughs> and I'm not saying we'll ever go back to that time, but I'm saying that that is how focused I am on the price. And I'm telling you, when you get into that mindset, when you are so 
when when it when all the other indicators and all the other things when you stop holding a grip on those your own confidence and 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 you can see this you can see this in me because you can hear how i talk and how i call the trains your confidence will increase when you understand the price and you stop relying on the indicators then you won't feel like like because a lot of times what happens is here's here's what happens a lot happens with people they'll see something lining up and then they'll see another thing that says the other thing so like they'll see everything's lined up for this thing and then all of a sudden this other thing tells them something different they say oh crap i don't know what to do this thing says this and this thing says this and it's not the same i don't know what to do like people are fine with indicators when everything is like do ba do ba do ba do but how many times does that happen it doesn't happen every day and doesn't happen every week those are the ones that are easy but that is not normal and that is not training and that is a reality that you would live with and to be successful in that's like one in a million so it's like a lot of times you'll have oh all of these things look perfect and then over here it says something different so everything here says it's a long then everything here says it's a short and then you say oh crap now what do i do that's why indicators aren't a strategy you can't follow indicators to get anything out of it i don't follow indicators because there's no strategic thing there that's going to tell you anything it's a computer that makes it which which has the price action in it which makes different lines that somebody made up whether it's a moving average or fibonacci or whatever i have very few indicators in my chart but if i took them all off i could still train because the only thing that counts is the price is the stock getting bought or is the stock selling off is the stock price moving lower or the stock price moving higher and that's important whether you're long or short say you're in something say you're an apple i'm going to pull this up right now say you're an apple and this was another beautiful call this was an option here say you're an apple great close to this i've run out of i don't even remember how many trades of calls in this in the last week they've all worked today i called the 260 250s these work too there's just fabulous calls I'm making here. But the reality is, though, that you look at this, you say, okay, well, here we are. Is this getting bought or is this selling off? Well, this is very easy. This, this isn't selling off. It's getting bought. Okay. Now, this is easy. This is an easy one. So if you looked at 10 different things, it would show you whatever, indicators. I don't know. But I'm just saying, like, you need to be able to do that no matter what. This case here, this is easy. The stock open, gap down, open, open neutral, and rallied every single solitary second of the day. Okay? Rallied $4 plus in the day. Made new highs today. Okay? So this is, like, easy. You could say, well, it's getting bought, Melissa. Yes. But not every day is this easy to see that. And you may not have seen this when I called the trade. So I call this trade, God, I screwed that up, sorry. Here, let me tell you the time I called the trade because I forget. What time did I call that trade? I saw it was going to break out, but there was a million trades on. The 260s were on. There were, I mean, there was just so many trades on in this, but I called another one because then I knew some people had gotten out of the 260s Friday. I called 11.49. So let's just see here what I saw. Let me squish it. Here. Now I'm going to take all this off. I'm going to get rid of everything here in the world just to prove my point. This was a good call. I'm going to get rid of everything except for the price. Um, okay, here we have. So there's nothing on but the candles, which which depict the price. So here we are. We open, rally, rally, rallied, right in here. I'm like, oh, this is hilarious here. This is gonna push up. And so I called the trade right in here. And here's what it did. It did it like 10 minutes after I saw it. Look at that. Wow. And 
I kept going. I kept going. So, you know, you don't need any anything. Just read it. So this is flat. We're not open. The market's closed. It's 520 at night. But I called this trade 10 minutes before it went poof. It was a nice call. But anyways, now that you look at it, you're like, oh, that's, you know, we can see that's getting bought. So you wouldn't short this. You would never, 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 never short that. Now, tomorrow, I may change my mind. I don't know. But, but for now, this was a nice call today. You could have got out of it today. Again, if you're still in it, fine. If you are still in it, you have to think this has more room to run, but this could be done today. This was a nice trade. It was money. Galahad saying DXC. Let's look at that before I take the charts off. Um, what the heck is this? Did I ever trade this? I don't know what this is here. This doesn't seem familiar to me. What? I don't know if I've ever traded this, but it's definitely gapping down. Well, this is a watch. I mean, it appears to have volume. I don't know if I've ever done this. Huh. Doesn't ring a bell. But anyways, this is gapping down. There you go. I'll look at this tomorrow. This could look a lot different. This is really tanking here, though. See how this closed here tonight? At 29.39, boom. Now, right now, this is live. Gally had found it. It's at 26 and change. Now, I don't know where this is, and I don't rate things at night. I wait to the morning. But anyways, this is gapping down. I'll look at this tomorrow morning. I can't remember if I've ever done this. I, if I have, I have no memory of it. It's kind of a new issue, though. All right, let's go back. Um, I forget what I was saying. Anyways, you got to focus on the price. And sometimes the less things you have on, the better, because then you're not going to get confused and you're not going to have to worry about do to do to do. And the problem is that if you are, if you are too focused on the other things, then you may miss what the price is telling you. There are times like in the Apple, like today, where it's very, very easy, but that's not 99.99999% of the time. And tomorrow you may have a different viewpoint because I might too. I don't know. I don't know. But Apple moves the market and the market goes with the Apple together a lot. Anyways, if you have goals, and one of your goals is to do this and make six figures a year, you have to chunk it out. You try to have weekly, monthly goals. Some days you're going to take a loss. Some days you're not going to achieve your daily goal. But some days you're going to make more than your goal. And that's life, okay? That's why you that's why you stops. Otherwise, it'd have an unlimited amount of risk. And you can't do that. So you chunk it out. You look at your entire month and say, okay, this is my goal. How much do I have to risk to achieve that goal? And typically, like I said, I'm looking for one to one. But it's really about that time of the day. Time of the day, time of the day, time of the day. Looking for the momentum, okay? I'm bringing this up again about the CVS just because this was a recent one from last week that carried through. But again, I felt 72 was 100% realistic. Took a couple days to get there. But again, I teach targets in the class. You can do options trading. You can do equity trading. You can make money doing both. I have people that are on the options letter that, that are not day trading. You have people in the day trading room that are on the options letter. I have people doing both. I, I like doing both because it's a different way to make money. And I think you can risk more when you do options because you're holding overnight to get bigger moves. However, that being said, it doesn't mean that I'm holding every option at all overnight, okay? Because you can day trade options. And it's really just about what works for you with your time, with your schedule, what your interest is. I called a bunch of trades in this, obviously these worked, this flew, this was the 69s that I called, 7.54 in the morning. So I knew this would work an hour and a half before the market opened, so. I wouldn't still be in this because I don't know, but if you are, you're still up in it. Anyways, if you want to trade for a living, you can do it. It's realistic, but you have to think about it in a realistic manner. It's going to take work. It's going to take time. It's going to cost money to do my class and learn what I know. 
It's you, you're not going to take $500 and make a hundred grand in a month. That's not realistic. It's just not. You have to think about what it's going to take to make this kind of money. But the sooner you get started, the sooner you're going to achieve your goals. Your goals are achievable, whatever they are. There's so much money that you can possibly make in the market. When you look at the people that you see on television that are millionaires and billionaires, they have money invested in the market and they make a lot of money in their investments. Now, how did they ever get to that point? They didn't do it in a day. They didn't do it in a week, okay? So, I mean, a lot of times people get sucked into having these wonderful, wonderful dreams, but then they use fantasy instead of thinking about reality. Reality is you can achieve your dreams, but you have to have real solid steps to get there. So if you're realistic and you can stop and let go of the fairy tales, you are going to, you are going to be so stronger as a person, as your confidence, your conviction, you will be so much more centered. You will make better financial decisions, not just in trading and other things in your life. When you, when you understand that you really can achieve the goals that you want and you know the hard work and steps that it's going to take to get there and the money it's going to cost and your time as well, then you are going to achieve your goals, but you have to stop believing in fairy tales. And one of the, one of the most difficult hurdles that I have had as an ed educator, and I never knew this before I started. And if someone had said, Melissa, you're going to have to deal with this. I would have said, Oh gosh, are you kidding me? I might have rethought it, but I'll tell you one of the hurdles that I've had of teaching people and being an educator is I am shocked to this day. I don't know if I'll ever stop being shocked at how many people, individuals, real people, you people here, some of you here may even think this way. A lot of people I've talked to, they're, they're totally, totally, totally in la la land about how to become successful. And then they wonder why they get caught all up with all kinds of crazy people telling them nutty things that are fairy tales. And, and then they get upset and say, well, I, I failed at this. Well, the, why did you even think you could do that? Why did you even think you could take $500 and make a million dollars? Why did you even think that that was possible? That's a fairy tale. That's a fantasy. You're not going to become successful for real believing in that nonsense. Okay. But I am, I, I've struggled with that as, a, as, a, as an educator to connect with people because I can't believe how many people believe that crazy stuff. And it is crazy town USA, okay? But you can be successful doing this. And again, it goes back to moving off of the greed. If you can make $6,000 in something, that's great. If you could have made $10,000, well, that's great. But six is really good. So take the six. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if you're risking a thousand and you can make twelve hundred, that's fabulous. If you're risking a thousand and you could have made two thousand, yeah, that would have been better. But how could you have foreseen that? It's a fairy tale that sometimes to know. You don't you don't know. You you're 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 not always gonna know. Sometimes you might and have an exit that's absolutely phenomenal. And sometimes we do. Sometimes we do that happens that happens. It happens a couple of times a year, it might happen once a month, but it doesn't happen every day. Okay, and that shouldn't even be your goal. Your goal is to make money and be consistent and stay grounded. It's the, it's the mentality, it's the groundedness that's going to help you make good financial decisions with your money, with your risk. Okay, because you are taking risk when you trade. And if you are off center and off balance, then you're not going to think right about your risk and you're not going to think right about what I'm teaching you either, which you have to pay attention. And what I'm doing works. I mean, this year I was talking about my assistant gyro who helps out with the trading room it's been a phenomenal year he agrees with me now he day trades and does options but that being said he is more of a long-term person okay he 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 does day trade but he he like prefers the options because it's his personality okay it's his personality and and so it's you know it's whatever your personality is he does both but he prefers he prefers the options. so i don't know what your personality is i don't know what you like me i like the quick ones I always like fast. Fast is good to me. I'd rather get out of a trade by 10, 15. If it goes on to work, it goes on. I've got the rest of the day to myself to do whatever. I can be on TV. I can do a webinar and talk to you. I can go get my nails done. So, I mean, for me, it's like that's my personality. So it's whatever your personality is, again, I don't, I don't know. But your dreams are achievable with money, time, and work. Don't get into the fantasy stuff because it's going to hurt you in the end, okay? That doesn't mean you can't trade with a small account. You can. You can. And you can take a small account and you can build it in a reasonable period of time with a reasonable risk. Okay. 
If you open up an account with $5,000 and you risk that whole amount in one trade, that you can see is crazy. That, that doesn't make any sense, okay? You have to think of it like you're going in and you're applying for a job and you wanna get a really, really big job, say at some company, I don't know, some Fortune 500 company. You want them to respect you and take you seriously and they're gonna pay you a lot of money if you do well and if you talk well and if you think well and if you write well and if you give them good advice and decisions and things that have to be done. They're gonna think you're crazy if you take unnecessary risk and have unnecessary uh, fantasy kind of goals with a certain amount of cash. So why would you do that with your own money? Why would you think that with your own money? You, you shouldn't, okay? You have to be realistic. And once you do well, once you start to be consistent, it becomes easier over time. Like I said, for me, if I have to think too hard about something, I realize it's probably not good, okay? Like CVS, I was trying to find a short, I was trying to find a short, I was trying to find a good short, whatever day that was last week, <laughs> I just couldn't. And I'm like, why am I doing this? I, CVS is good, boom, no thinking. Rate the gap, it rates well, that's the one, we're doing it. So it was like, I was trying to find a short because I prefer to short, I really do. But CVS was like screaming in my face. I said, oh, this is, and I just laughed at myself because I'm like, because I do prefer to short, but CVS was great. So I was like, okay, fine. So you just, you just got, you get in the groove. You learn it. Day trading produces income week by week. It's not investing. You can learn how to do this from me, but you have to have goals. You make the procedure how you're going to achieve those goals. You take the steps. And then you get out of the fairy tale thing, and then you're gonna you're just gonna be do so much better off for yourself. You're gonna you're gonna really help yourself so much once you get into that mindset where you know you can do it, and this is what's required, and you're gonna you're gonna do it. You're gonna become stronger, you're gonna become better, you're gonna become better over time, and you will make more money, and you will become more successful, and you will become wealthier when you understand what's involved and get out of that fantasy mindset. Any questions from anybody here so far? Galahad, is that the only one you see tonight? <coughs> Anyways, I have a rating system. If you want to do the class, you'd learn it. It measures gaps by rating them on the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, big move in the day, and early confirmation of the bias and move between 9.30 and 10. Precise entries also with follow through and a good risk to reward target potential. So the class is $6,500. It's $64.99. Don't worry about making the cost of that class back in one trade. You will over time. You will learn it in several trades. Don't worry about making it back in one day. The system is called the Golden Gap System. I invented it. It's a professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade and when to trade and what direction. We're looking at 26 points. That's the only thing I do. It doesn't matter if it's an option or a day trade or whatever. But I'm looking at institutional money and price patterns and gaps. You don't need to do anything else. You just don't. And I don't. And I never will because this works, although I'm just going to take more risk. So the class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's this weekend, November 16th and 17th. Only two more classes this year. This one this coming weekend and one in December. And that's it. If you want to get in, the deadline is a 15th. The deadline is Friday. Okay. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Uh, Kathy said I'm a great motivational speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Galahad, yes, when you don't see any other gaps. Any questions from anyone about anything so far? Thank you, Kathy. So think about it. You're, this is an investment in yourself, okay? I also have the options newsletter. This is $59.99 a year. It's, it's one year of all the options trades. They're emailed to you. you. There's no prerequisites for this. You have to take the Golden Gap course in order to join the live trading room and get the calls. But again, I'm doing an open house if you want to come this week. Class is not recorded. You have to be there live and you you will you have to be there live. Like how could you possibly not be there live? You want to be there live. You have to ask me questions. Okay? Cuz you're going to have questions and you need to be there live. My classes are always live. You need to be there live. No recordings allowed. But you're going to want to ask me questions cuz you're going to have questions. I guarantee you you're going to have questions. Okay? You're doing this cuz you want to get it. Cuz you want to understand it. Because you want to 
you want to be good. You want to get good at it. That's the reason. Let me just quickly look and see if there's anything else while Galahad is looking at any other questions from anyone at all. Uh, let me just see if there's quickly anything out. Uh, no, I don't really see anything tonight either, but there's a bunch of things tomorrow. Yeah. Bunch of things tomorrow morning, but I, do, I will look at the one, I will look at the one that Galahad said. Any questions from anyone about anything at all? Listen, if you're interested in a trial this week, email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. Kathy, are you there? Kathy, I'm going to call you as soon as we're done here about something. Please let me know that you get this message. Two more classes this year, that's it. And I think I think people should join this, this weekend so they can start trading before the end of the year. No, not you, Kathy. Kathy, support. Hot come, Kathy. Sorry. <laughs> All right, great. Listen, have a great, great, great evening, everybody. And have a good trading day tomorrow. Very good. Thank you.